sure as I could predict that Tuesday comes <coughs> after Monday, I made sure to stay up till 2 o'clock last night to get these cases, to alert the court to what was the state's obvious intention, to put a witness on there for the purpose of introducing out-of-court statements that are otherwise inadmissible, instead of at least admitting that that was what the state intended to do, it advanced a ruse, pretext, that they were seeking to do so under 8035. It turns out that 8035, given the witness's testimony, could not be employed. And so the state then went back to plan one, the original one all along, of the state reading evidence from written documents and out-of-court statements, including police reports, statements on Instagram, arguments being had into the record. Through the state's own mouth, knowing very well that it was improper, that the court had ruled that it should not and could not be done, and it does not somehow become relevant because they declare hostility, which they knew about from the inception. The state made a representation to this court that it was a complete surprise. Um, that's not a credible statement. I think it is incumbent upon this court to discern the veracity of that contention. There was a witness there, happened to be Ms. Holmes's lawyer. He's present. The state essentially trying to circumvent the rules, circumvent the order of this court, and testify to this jury about documents and information that it wanted to put before the jury, which it found no permissible way to do. The court warned the state, I don't want you trying to go through the back door, which you can't get through the front door, and they launched immediately into that pursuit. The jury sat there while the state made implication after implication, introduced admissible evidence after admissible evidence to the substantial prejudice of this defendant. And so not only did they do it after we raised the issue, they did it after the court ruled against the state and admonished the state not to do just that and they launched into that pursuit. Mr. Demons has been prejudiced. This jury sat there and watched this fiasco unfold with at least 10, maybe 15 sidebars after every two questions with the implications that were being all, all predicated on the implications and the inadmissible testimony that Ms. Bradley herself read into and spoke into the record. And for that reason, we think that it was deliberate. It is highly prejudicial. This jury has been tainted, and we move for a mistrial. Oh, there's one more thing. Uh, if you don't mind, I'll have Mr. Alistine articulate what that might be. This is your motion for Mr. Alistine? Yes, it's our motion for mistrial. This is the second one. All right, go ahead. Well, yes, it's second. Yes, second one. Judge, in my entire career, I've never heard the state imply with no evidence whatsoever that the defense team would take care of this witness. And even though the court gave that instruction and told them to ignore it, that question the the defense team would take care of you if you answered like this is so improper. Not only does it taint our client on the other questions, but it taints everybody at this table. 
And despite the judge, in your honor's instruction to ignore it, it's pretty hard to ignore something like that. When their entire questioning for the last 30, 40 minutes had been so improper, and the court told them not to do it. And they proceeded and proceeded and proceeded. We're moving for a mistrial. And just for the record, Your Honor, I personally um, have seen Ms. Holmes in the flesh or spoken to her twice ever at that deposition and today. Um, never by phone, never by text. Couldn't distinguish her from a can of paint until she showed up for the depot. And I haven't spoken to her since. So just to let the court know, there is no factual predicate for um, the um, implication, or not implication, the accusation made by the state that the defense sought to take care of her. And the same for me. I met her at the depot and saw her today. For the record, it was my first time ever seeing her in my life. Thank you. Well done, guys. Counsel? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Judge, with regards to that, the statements that were in the records are what was used as impeachment, where it says they said that they were going to take care of us. Defense read into it and implied it meant there. It was never said the defense team in any way, shape, or form. So defense implied or read into that in some additional context that was not presented in any way, shape, or form. I was basing it on based in the records and the statements that this witness made and put forth in her Instagram account about this case on that. And it's very, in terms of the forming the questions, Your Honor, it was understood that I was put under very strict and difficult conditions to formulate any question because defense obviously wants to limit because they know the contents of what this individual has said and all of the statements that she has made that are damaging to their client. Hence why the state would be seeking to use her as a witness. That means, that means nothing, Your Honor. The fact that it's damaging, I'll concede that. It's inadmissible. And the status of this impression that there is a catch-all we're only trying to seek justice and do good exceptions to all the rules of evidence. And there is no such thing. If it's admissible, admit it through an admissible procedure. You don't try and end around the court's order and the case law by coming in onto some pretext and doing exactly what I told the court would happen and create an entire prejudicial fiasco and introduce inadmissible evidence into the record. That's what occurred, and this jury has been irreparably prejudiced. Or that Mr. Uh, Demons' interests have been irreparably prejudiced before this jury.